So let's imagine that you have your finished product and you're ready to export this file out. Now I've shown you how you can save out files like a PSD file, but let's see how you would export image files. Now you could do save as and, and save it as an image file, which is an easy way of going to the top, clicking file, save as. And then it'll allow you to save out like a JPG or a PNG file. However, you typically want to export those images out because when you export, it's going to give you a little more control and allow you to adjust some of the settings for saving out that image. Now, right here, there's some other things that you can do. You can also share and share on Behance. Uh, sharing will allow you to connect applications such as Twitter, Facebook, uh, and all kinds of other applications. So that's something that you'll want to look into. I'm not going to get into that right now. And we're going to just look at the export settings. So under export, under the file menu, you can see we can do quick export as a PNG. This is the fastest way to get out a file. We click on that and save it right away. If you're doing a lot of quick work, this is great. Export as is going to be the common way for you to send out your files into images, and this is going to give you some control. We'll take a look at this in just a moment. Uh, we can go ahead and access our export preferences here. When we go there, we can change things like how do we want the quick export to be uh, we can not have it a PNG. Maybe we do a lot of JPGs. We can change that in the export preferences. It's the same thing as going to the edit menu preferences and in there going to the export preferences. It's going to take you to the same place. Then we can do save for web and this is a uh, legacy. So basically this is an older way of being able to save out images. It does have some things that are great about it, especially if you're doing web work. So we'll take a look at that also. And then we have some other things that you can do. If you have artboards, you can save out the artboards to files or PDFs. You can save out layer compositions and layers to files. So we could actually, if we had 10 layers of images, we could actually save out all those individual layers as separate images instead of one image, which is what exporting is going to do. Uh, we can uh, send out color lookup tables, data sets as files, pass to Illustrator, you can render out video, and you can do Zoomify images. We're not going to take a look at all these right now. We'll just focus on saving for web and exporting. And a uh, quick export as PNG just real fast. I'll show you if you click on that. It's just going to open up the save dialog and you give it a name, hit save, and your PNG is already rendered and saved out. But let's go back and let's click on export and we're going to take a look at the export as. Now when it pulls this up, it's going to give information about the image, it's going to give us a preview, and it's going to allow us to quickly change out some of the file settings. So here we can see the scale, we can see the original image, baby, JPG, the pixel dimensions, and it's a 12.4 megabyte file. We have a preview that we can zoom in and zoom out, and then we have the file settings of how we want to export that image. So under format, we can change it to a PNG, JPG, GIF, or SVG file. We can uh, tone down the quality if we don't need it to be as high resolution. Uh, maybe it's a smaller file size and we can tone down the quality. You can do that here. We can change the image size right here. So instead of doing it in uh, the image size or image menu command, you can do it right here as you export, which is really nice. You can also change down the scale and how it's resampled. We can change the canvas size, which is something else you can do instead of going under the image tab. And then we can say if we want to give it any metadata right here. So this is great if you're sharing this on websites or say a blog and you want to have the information about this picture in it when it saves, you can do that right here. And then also what kind of color space that we're using. We'll just leave all these at the default. And maybe we want to save this out as a JPG and we're gonna use it on a website, but 4,000 by 5,000 pixels is way too big for any website design work that we're doing. And we wanna to tone that down. So let's just say we drop this down to 25%. When I change that, you can see that it changed it changes the width and the height here to a much more comfortable level of something that we would see on the internet. Now, my screen's 1920 by 1280, so this is gonna be almost filling out the screen size. But when we change that, you see it changed the preview window, and now we can go ahead and zoom in here and just kind of check the quality and make sure it still looks good. Once we have everything the way that we want it, we just go down and we click on the export all button, and 
we can just go ahead and save out the name and whatever we have it marked as, so we have it marked as a JPG, that's what it'll save it as. So we'll just go ahead and save that file out. And that's all it takes. So if I go to file and I go to open, you can see that JPG file, it went down to about 1.1 megabytes. I can open it up and check it just to see how it looks. And here's the image. And if we go to uh, the full dimensions, that's the full resolution size that we went to, 1,181 pixels by 1,388 pixels. So we'll just go ahead and close that out. And let's go ahead and take a look at the other way to, to export out images. And this is safe for web. Now, of course, we can't see this, so let's zoom out. And we have our little hand tool that we can move around if we need to. It won't affect the image in any way. And you can see some tools that we have here. We have our slice select tool, so we can select different slices. We can zoom in and out. We have an eyedropper tool, uh, eyedropper color tool, and slices of visibility. So when you slice up your image inside of Photoshop, you're able to come in here and select those and save those out individually or all at one time. So here we have the original image and we see the preview here. And then we have the optimize, which is whenever we do any presets or changes over here, it shows it in the optimize tab. Then we have two up and this is really great if we want to compare uh, the original file to whatever we're doing in our settings. So let's take a look at that. Here we have some presets. So we can see different GIS, JPG, high, low, and medium, and PNG files. And then we can see uh, the individual settings. So what kind of file we want to set it as, uh, the compression quality, uh, the actual quality, if we want to be progressive or optimize and embed a color pro profile or not, add any blurring or matting, and then how we want to uh, convert the uh, color information here. We can also do the other thing like we did before, such as the image size. So let's go ahead and change that down to 25% so that it's the same as before. And the quality of the resampling that we want here, there's also some animations uh, information if we're doing any animated GIFs. But let's go ahead and change the quality here. So it's going to update because we changed the size and it needed to update that. Now we can zoom back in so we can see it. So we have the original file on the left hand side, 6.25 megabytes. This JPG is already down to 229 kilobytes, so not even a full megabyte yet. So this is great if we're working with web, we have a very small file size here. And we can mess around with these settings to see what it does to the image. So we went to higher compression, which is going to save a little bit more, and that file size went up. Or we can do very low compression and have a very very small file size of 55 kilobytes. So let's go ahead and take the quality and we can even drop that down. And you might not see any major changes in the preview window, but if you start mess around, messing around with this image, you will see the differences between the original and the new JPG. Even if we zoom in, you're probably going to see some types of things being distorted. So for instance, we have these nice uh, hard marks on the face here, and over here they're kind of blurred out. So you can see some differences in the quality of this image, and that's reflected in the fact that it's a JPG, it's compressed, it's at a very small file size, and uh, we've changed all these down to the lowest quality settings that we have. So you can have a two up or a four up, so you can actually check out multiple versions of of these edits if you want but we'll just stick with the two up for now so we can see those and then whenever we're ready just like before with export as we can click on save and this is baby we don't want to override the one we did already so let's just call this baby compressed which is just means we compressed it more than the original jpg and there you have it so that saved that out let's go ahead and open up both of those files again so baby and baby compressed and you can check them out. So these are going to be at 66%, that's fine. So here we have the original baby.psd file with all of our layers that we can adjust. Then we have the baby.jpg and you can see that there's no longer any editable layers because this is an image file. If we wanna edit, we need to go back to the PSD file. And then we have baby compressed, which is a much smaller file size. It has the same resolution and the same dimensions, 
but the actual file size itself is a lot smaller because of the way that we compress that file. So hopefully that gives you some good information on how you can export out your images as you begin working inside of Photoshop.